Senator Fred Akshar, thanks so much for being on New York Now this week. I really appreciate it. Great to be with you. Thank you so much. So, Senator, I wanted to have you on and get your perspective because unlike a lot of members of the legislature, you actually have a background in law enforcement. You were in the Broome County Sheriff's Office. And I think that gives you a really unique perspective on a lot of these issues. So let's start with the, the discussion of changing policing, basically. I want to know, as a member of law enforcement in your past, do you think that changes need to be made to the way that police do their jobs, given that what we've seen over the past few weeks? You know, look, I think that uh, the, clearly there is an issue uh, when you see uh, the events as they unfolded uh, in Minneapolis. So I think any member of law enforcement would agree with me in saying that uh, what we saw was reprehensible. What we saw, most importantly, was criminal. Uh, and those officers, in fact, uh, are being held uh, to account. Uh, I think the most important thing uh, to remember, at least from my perspective, is um, Yes, there are bad apples, uh, but there are bad apples uh, in, in every uh, profession. And uh, those particular bad apples in the law enforcement um, space need to be weeded out because, quite frankly, uh, what has happened here is that the, the, the actions of a few have, have really painted every member of law enforcement with a very broad brush. And I think that's unfortunate because 99.5% of the members of law enforcement are, in fact, very good people. How do you weed out those bad apples? That's what I keep on going back to, because some could make the argument that you don't really know that it's a bad apple until it's too late, until they go that extra step and kill somebody who, you know, was not harming them or had no threat to people. Does it come with training? Does it come with, you know, more oversight? What can we do? You know, much of it, I think, um, you, you know, you can't say that much of that can be weeded out during the hiring process, right? Because you, you may interview someone and they have just a, uh, they have a very good background, uh, they have a very good interview, uh, and then come to find out once they start to put their uh, training into, into real action in, in, in real life scenarios, you find out that, um, you know, they're, they're not the person who you once thought they were. Uh, I think it's important to have a very robust uh uh, disciplinary procedure. And, uh, you know, of course, in, in any time, I think, at least from my own experiences in organized labor, sometimes it's a little bit harder to, uh, to fire someone. I mean, that is a reality, right? Uh, when people have uh, civil service protection, you know, look, psychological exams are not mandatory uh, in, in the hiring process for law enforcement. Uh, that is something that I think we could probably uh, take a look at moving forward. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, I talk about policies and best practices. Uh, I, I think that every law enforcement agency should be accredited by the Division of Criminal Justice Services. I come from an agency that was accredited in, in all three uh, divisions, and I think it's incredibly important because that forces the agency to, to have very, a very robust uh, policy and procedure manual uh, and uh, practice best practices. So let's talk about Civil Rights Law 50A, which ties into this whole conversation about uh, police disciplinary procedures, basically the law on the books, uh, allowed local governments to withhold from public access disciplinary records and some personnel records of members of law enforcement. And under a bill this week, that'll be repealed. So people will be able to file a Freedom of Information Law request and get those disciplinary records. What do you think of that as a former member of law enforcement? Is that a way to kind of uh, look at a pattern uh, of people or is that uh, kind of violating some privacy concerns of law enforcement? I know that was a concern of the police unions. Yeah, listen, I have concerns with uh, the bill as currently authored. I know it's been amended a couple of times, but no, I think what's most important for your viewers to know that uh, there is, in fact, a statutory framework uh, that is currently in place uh, that would allow uh, defense attorneys and others uh, to make application to the court uh, if they thought that uh, getting access to those records was important. For me, personally, this comes down to due process. And uh, every American under the, the, under the Constitution is afforded due process. And that shouldn't be different just because uh, your mayor was working in the law enforcement arena. So, um, you know, I think that the, the I'll give credit where credit is due. I think the sponsor of the bill, uh, Senator Bailey, uh, has done a great deal of listening in uh, the last week or so. Uh, they've made some amendments to the bill, which, uh, of course, protects uh, personal information of officers. And, and quite honestly, uh, had the sponsor of the bill really uh, made some inroads in terms of um, uh, un unsubstantiated claims as they uh, relate to uh, police officers 
uh, that may have moved my my position a little bit. But the fact that we would include those uh, in, in a record that we would release to the public, uh, I find troubling. All right, we'll leave it there. Senator Fred Akshar, thank you so much for joining us here this week. We really appreciate your perspective on this issue. Thanks so much.